Nocturnal, Midnight Oil. Jamie, local human, couldn't sleep. He did not know why. Not being in his house might not have been the issue, as it sometimes was. He was instead in the house of some friends of his, having gone over there to engage in an evening and a night of low-level revelry via snacks, tabletop gaming, and slightly stale anecdotes. His friends, Stop It and Tidy Up, were not local humans. They were instead local ponies. Local ponies being a lot less thin on the ground in these particular parts than local humans. Jamie himself being something of a novelty. A unique novelty, in fact. The most novel of novelties by default. So perhaps it was the unfamiliar environment? Probably not, given that it wasn't actually that unfamiliar and he had slept over there numerous times before without any problems. The last time, for example, had been totally fine, and he'd slept like a proverbial baby, and the time before that. So perhaps it was something else. Perhaps the heat? Perhaps the humidity? Perhaps the weight of the world playing on his mind? The state of the economy? Favorite sporting team not sporting enough? Indigestion? Poor tabletop performance? Any of the above? All of the above? Ultimately, the reasons why didn't matter. What mattered was that he couldn't sleep. What mattered was that he was the only one in the house that appeared to be awake. And this didn't appear to change. And so, after a fruitless hour, or more, he wasn't keeping track, of staring at the ceiling and listening to Tidy Up snoring loud enough to make the windows rattle, or not, he wasn't sure, Jamie finally gave in, got up, and went downstairs. Milk was the answer. Or milk was an answer. Or milk was what he was gonna try. Warm milk. They said that did the trick, didn't they? So he filled a glass and spent a minute or so faffing around with a magic-powered microwave substitute. It took him a try or two, but before too long, he had milk that was warm. And he was standing there. Staring into middle distance, holding his glass of warm-ish milk, when down from above swung a pointy-eared, pointy-toothed, beaming face. Hey, a cutie! Holy crap! By some miracle, he did not spill his milk, even if the surprise appearance did see him stumbling back across the kitchen and falling into a chair that, entirely coincidentally, happened to be positioned in such a way he could fall into it. The pony-toothed face let out a pony-toothed giggle. Jamie's immediate gut-level response to having someone appear out of thin air in front of him was to rouse the household to the fact there was an intruder. But then his rational mind intervened and reminded him that he had in fact been informed by both Stop It and Tidy Up that they had another housemate. One he just so happened to have never seen on account of the hours they kept. Nocturnal hours, evidently. So no. Not an intruder, no. The other housemate, the elusive one. Pink, fluffy ears, big eyes, bat wings. The bat pony they'd mentioned. The one he'd only ever heard of and never actually met in person or so much as glimpsed. Jamie's brain fumbled in the back drawers for her name, as they had told it to him on more than one occasion. Foxglove, isn't it? He ventured. The Bat Pony's already enormous smile got even more enormouser. And he knows my name. Oh, what a gentle colt. She said, a hoof to her bosom as she continued to be there, upside down. There's a hanging joke around here, but... Oh man, my heart's racing too much to make it yet. Jamie said, wincing and clutching his chest and setting his glass of milk on a handy kitchen counter. Oh, going a mile a minute. We only just met. Before Jamie could say anything to this, before he could even digest it sufficiently to think of anything to say to this, Foxglove dismounted the ceiling, swung, flapped, and flitted through the air to land perfectly on the table beside Jamie's chair, there to sit with folded legs, leaning on one hoof to keep the distance between them to a minimum. What you doing anyway, cutie? She asked. This was all very forward. But Jamie was too fuzzy in the head from tiredness. And too fluffy in the head from tufty ears and big eyes to be all that put out. It did take him a second to gather his wits, though. 
and when he did, he vaguely pointed to his nearby glass. Trying to get to sleep. Not doing very well. I was staring at the ceiling for a bit, and that wasn't working, so I came down for warm milk. Warm milk has never actually worked before, but whatever. Worth another shot, right? He asked, raising a glass. True, true. More milk is always an idea if you want to get to sleep. She said, nodding. And then... Or... Or... Jamie repeated. With a grace and elegance, Jamie had only ever seen ponies, Master. Foxglove pivoted in place, so she was no longer sitting, but was instead on her belly. Hind legs kicking behind her and four legs in front. Chin rested on her hooves, eyelashes fluttering at him. Or maybe you can make yourself some coffee instead and stay up and keep me company? How's that sound? She asked. That an option? Oh, with a... Um, what are you again? Human. <laughs> with a human as cute as you? That's always an option. Eyes continued to be fluttered. Uh, laying it on a little thick there, aren't you? Jamie asked, and Foxglove heaved herself up so their faces were level and their nose would, with a little effort, have touched. Oh, I haven't even started yet. So, what do you say? Jamie had to look away. He was smiling and couldn't help from smiling, but he did have to look away. It was far too late, or early, maybe, for this, for him. You did hear the part where I was trying to get some sleep, didn't you? He asked, glancing back at her, grinning. She was grinning too, though hers was pointier, and she was back to resting her chin on her hooves. Yes, but since you aren't asleep and since you are here talking to me, why not make the most of that instead? You want to talk? In yet another dazzlingly smooth pivot, Foxglove twisted herself back around so she was sitting. This time though, right on the edge, so far forward her dangling legs were very nearly touching his. We are talking. I just like to keep talking. Get to know you better, darling. I've heard so much about you from the others. She said. This was news to him. Really? Here, Foxglove's demeanor wilted albeit only for a split second. Well, no. She said, before immediately perking right back up again. But I heard you mentioned, and it intrigued me. And seeing you, I can see it wasn't for nothing. And I heard you mention too. Never thought I'd actually see you, though. Lucky Colt, then. And lucky me. Lucky us. Hmm. Do you feel pretty lucky? Jamie said. Unable to suppress a smile, or a moment later, a yawn, having to gnaw on his fist to stifle the worst of it. Oh, um, oh sorry. Uh, coffee then? Um, I don't actually know where that is. Foxglove helped him out, and in short order, he had something hot and black clutched in his hand, and was sitting back at the kitchen table. Foxglove was still as close to sitting in his lap as could be managed without actually just being in his lap. So, I don't see many, uh, humans. So, what's your story, hmm? This again. Jamie took a deep breath. Well... And so, between tentative sips of scalding coffee, he laid out the sequence of events that had led to his being there, and not being where he was ostensibly supposed to be. It was a story that he'd held to reiterate a good few times at this point, and he frankly was sick of it. But the locals were not yet sick of asking it. As far as he was concerned, it was a bit of a boring story anyway. How do you wind up in another dimension exactly? The normal way? What other way is there? And so that's... He said, having to stop to yawn again. A lifetime of caffeine abuse had meant the coffee had exactly zero impact on his tiredness. He had been a little worried that it happened. I'm having issues here. He said, blinking blearily at Foxglove, who went. Aww. Again, and patted him on the cheek before saying. If you are going to insist on going to sleep, I may be able to help you out. 
Jamie tried, and failed, to open his eyes fully. That sounds a bit worrying. He said, and Foxglove giggled. Not worrying at all. I just had another idea. She said. You're full of ideas, aren't you? Jamie said, taken aback a second later when Foxglove leaned in close again to bring their faces, more or less, into contact. Oh, cutie. I look at you, and I can't help but get all sorts of ideas. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Jamie said, sitting back and shaking his head. You always like this? He asked. Foxglove also sat up, stretching up her forelegs over her head and shifting her weight on the table, wiggling about. Someone's gonna have to give it that a wipe later. Jamie thought, certainly before anyone ate off it. I know what I like, and I don't mind much if anyone else knows either. Jamie couldn't really argue with that. Had he found the whole situation unpleasant or an imposition, he might have felt the need or desire to argue with it. But since he didn't, he didn't. Fortunate, really. It would have put the length and breadth of their conversation into a very uncomfortable light if he hadn't been a willing and content participant. Context, really, was something else. Magical, you might say. Furthermore... Are you still with me, darling? Foxglove asked, waving a huff in front of Jamie's face. He blinked and brought his focus in from a million miles distance to the bat pony and directly ahead of him. Mm, uh, sorry, drifting. Um, idea. You had an idea? Yes. If you insist on falling asleep, you are very cute when you're sleepy, by the way, then I know a nice, warm, comfortable place where you can do it, said Foxglove. Jamie's mind chugged on this for a second or two. Is that... Are, are you... Is that a bed? Your bed? My, so forward. No, not my bed. Not tonight, at least. No, it was just that my original plan for the evening was a nice hour or so on the sofa watching something. If you wanted to join me, I wouldn't mind. And if you wanted to just lie down and lay your head in my lap and doze off, well, then I wouldn't mind that either. Jamie's mind chugged a bit more, working on this fresh information. That sounds alright. He said. Another very pointy grin from Foxglove. I thought so too. All of which was why, about 15 minutes later, Jamie was sprawled flat on the sofa, legs dangling over one arm, head in a bat pony's lap, snoring quietly, and sleeping peacefully. Next time he's over, I'm gonna make sure that we do more than just talk. Anyways, let's get on to our appropriate donators. Top donators are 630, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkseid, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Amicon Lyre, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ritesel, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke369, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.